to add or subtract decimals, the first thing that you always need to do is line up your decimals. Once your decimals are lined up, you can add or subtract like normal. In this example, we have 5 and 23 hundredths plus 7 and 489 thousandths. To solve this problem, I'm going to take both of these add-ins and I'm going to line up their decimals. So I'll start with 5.23 and I'm going to add 7.489. Now, I notice that in this space, I don't have a number to add to 9, but I can always add a 0 because that does not change the value of 5.23. Now that I have my decimals lined up and I have a placeholder in every place, I can add my numbers. 0 plus 9 is 9. 3 plus 8 is 11. So I write my 1 and carry my 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 4 is 7. And 5 plus 7 is 12. Now, I always need to make sure that I bring my decimal down in my sum. So the sum of 5.23 plus 7.489 is 12.719, or 12 and 7 19 thousandths. For this problem, I have 9.5 minus 2.64, so I will start by lining up my decimals. So 9.5 minus 2.64. Now when I do this, I notice that there's nothing to take the 4 away from, so I need to put a 0 as a placeholder. That 0 does not change the value of 9.5. Now I can subtract like normal. I know that I cannot take 4 away from 0, so I'm going to borrow from the 5 and make that into a 4. When I do that, this becomes a 10. 10 minus 4 gives me 6. Now I know that I also cannot take 6 away from 4, so I'm going to have to borrow from the 9, which will make that an 8, but that changes my 4 to a 14. 14 minus 6 gives me 8, and then 8 minus 2 gives me 6, and I'm going to bring my decimal down. So the difference of 9.5 and 2.64 is 6.86 or 6 and 86 hundredths. For this, I'm going to start by lining up my decimals. So I have 12.3 plus 4.976. For this, I need to add a zero in two places, and then I can add like normal. Zero plus six is six, zero plus seven is seven, 3 plus 9 is 12, and I carry my 1. I can bring down my decimal so that I don't forget it. 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 4 is 7, and then 1 can be brought down. So the sum is 7 and 276 thousandths. For this problem, it says that Tanya goes to the mall. She purchases a shirt for $18.75, a pair of earrings for $3.92, and a necklace for $9.43. How much does she spend at the mall? If I know that she spent all of this at the mall, then to figure out how much she spent, I'm going to add those numbers. Again, because they're decimals, I need to make sure that I line up the decimals. So I have $18.75, $3.92, and $9.43. Now that the decimals are lined up, I can add like normal. 5 plus 2 is 7, 7 plus 3 is 10, so I write my 0 and carry my 1. 1 plus 7 is 8, 8 plus 9 is 17, 17 plus 4 is 21, so I write my 1 and carry my 2. I'm going to bring down my decimal so I don't forget. 2 plus 8 is 10, 10 plus 3 is 13, 13 plus 9 is 22. So I write my 2 and carry my other 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. This means that Tanya spent $32.10 at the mall. Finally, Jay's mom gave him $25 to spend at the movies. 
If he spent $8.50 on his movie ticket, then spent an additional $13.47 at the concession stand, how much change did he have left? Well, the first thing I want to know is how much money he spent. He spent $8.50 on the ticket, and he also spent $13.47 at the concession stand. So to figure out how much he spent, I'm going to add those numbers. So $8.50 plus $13.47 and I'm careful to make sure that I line up my decimals. Zero plus seven is seven. Five plus four is nine. I'm going to bring down my decimal. Eight plus three is 11, so I carry my one, and one plus one is two. So Jay spent $21.97. Now, his mom gave him $25 to take to the movie. If he spent $21.97 and I want to know how much does he have left, I'm going to take $21.97 away from $25. Well, when I do that, I'm going to subtract. And when I subtract, I know that I need to line up my decimals, but on 25, it looks like there is no decimal. Every whole number has an invisible decimal behind the last digit. So behind 25, there is actually an invisible decimal. So I can subtract 2197 from 25 by putting my decimal in that place. I also need to make sure that I put my zeros as my placeholders. Now I can subtract. I cannot take zero away from seven. So I'm gonna have to borrow from the other number, but I also can't take zero away I can't take anything away from zero. So I'm going to have to come all the way over here and borrow from my five, which makes this a four. Now that I've borrowed from the five, that makes this number a 10. And now I can borrow from this. So when I borrow from 10, that's actually going to make this number a nine. And that makes this number a 10. Now I can subtract 10 minus seven to get three. 9 minus 9 gives me 0. I'm going to bring down my decimal. 4 minus 1 gives me 3. And 2 minus 2 gives me 0. And I don't need that 0 because 03.03 zero three zero three is the same as $3.03. So J had $3.03 .03 left.